And that was The Way I Feel by Play for Keeps. Now, how did it feel to hear one of your songs being played for the first time on radio? Cameron? Hello? Oh, there I am. Sorry. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it feels really good. It, it, it's a really good feeling. I love. That's happened a, a couple times for us since being independent and not being able to get your stuff on radio all the time, you know. But yeah, so that feels really good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Now, as you said, you play all over Las Vegas and in some really great venues like the Hard Rock, the House of Blues, the Black Door, and more. Mm-hmm. What is it like to see you in a live concert? Um, I, we like to move around as much as we can. Um, we, most of the time I'm pretty planted at my microphone because I, since there's four of us, I play guitar and sing as well. I, I okay. don't just sing. So, um, I, uh, kind of move around a lot in my one little space <laughs> in front of the microphone, <laughs> but John and Brian, um, kind of go back and forth and do little do their thing we try to keep things very lively um but also we try to um keep the harmonies uh nice and tight and try to sing the same stuff that we record we try to implement live as well so well does uh, anyone break a guitar on the stage after a set (laughs) not quite that hard not quite that uh, heavy (laughs) but Yeah, there's plenty of broken Uh, strings and sticks and stuff, but nothing too crazy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Do you meet up with the fans after a concert? Yes. Uh, We try to as much as we can uh, at every point to talk to everybody, basically, because the fans are, you know, the reason why we do what we do. Yeah, well, as a a fan, it it means a lot to us when you guys do that. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's a, a very high priority. Uh, for us to make sure that everybody, you know, we try to talk to everybody after every show. It's it's harder to do when uh, for like headlining shows because most of the time, mm-hmm. once you once you're done, then you know, a few minutes later they close the venue, <laughs> basically. Oh. So, <laughs> at least here in Vegas, like a lot of times the the, the um, and we have a, we play a lot of shows uh, for an all ages audience, not just for you know the bar crowd, but. Uh, because we have a lot of fans that are not 21 yet. So right. we try to play a lot of all-ages shows um, for them as well so they can come see us live and you know, not be able to be able to get in. Like, we're playing a, a show at House of Blues again, actually, this Friday, and it's an all-ages show. So An all-ages show? Mm-hmm. Well, that's good because I know that there were times that I wanted to take my daughter with me to a concert and would be playing at some club and I couldn't because she wasn't old enough. Yeah. So, you know, that's, they lose out that way. So I love when they're able to include any age at, at when you're going at a club. Now, yeah. what is your favorite song to play out of all the songs you've written? Ooh, uh, that's tough. Uh, it depends. I think for for me as the singer, my for, personally one of my favorites to sing is uh, the song on our new EP called Selfish. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of it has a, a lot of ups and downs, and it I just it's really kind of really intense for me to sing. So I really love playing that one live. And then as far as uh, instrumentals go, I like playing. Uh, there's a final track on the EP, a different pace called What's the Point, and I really like playing that one because uh, it kind of has a nice little groove that we wrote for, but the beat's pretty kind of easygoing, and I really enjoy that kind of music. Well, what song is requested the most by your fans? Um, probably uh, the one that you just played, The Way I Feel. That's a really popular one for us as well. And then um, Come Around. It's kind of the ballad from our newest EP. That one mm-hmm. is uh, very popular. And it's my mom's favorite, too. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah, my mother loves that one. Does your mom go to a lot of your gigs? Uh, no. Uh, my parents actually live in Austin, Texas, and I live here in Las Vegas. 
Oh, okay. So, yeah, that would be kind of hard. Flying, <laughs> they are flying into town uh, tomorrow night to come see me play, uh, see all of us play on, on Friday. So. Oh, that's wonderful. Do you feel nervous when you know somebody like that, like your parents are in the crowd listening? Oh, no. No, the you know, I have nothing – uh, they'll be proud of me no matter what I do, basically. So yeah. <laughs> I never have to be nervous <laughs> around them. But. So it's, well, yeah, I mean, ner- oh, sorry, continue. No, that's all right. Go ahead. I was going to say, ner- uh, getting nervous at shows is um, something that I've kind of sort of gotten over. I mean, you, you have the little butterflies before every concert for sure, but um, I never really had too much problems with stage fright i guess which is which is nice <laughs> yeah that really helps <laughs> now does <laughs> having like the spotlights and stuff on you help because then you don't see the crowd as much um no i actually like seeing the crowd um it kind of gets me you know to see a lot of people down there always gets you you know gets the adrenaline pumping and everything but um it it really just kind of makes things really hot because those spotlights are really, yeah. really bright. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> really hot. So. Yeah. Well, I I wanted to talk about in 2010 you released an album called Goodbye Natural Hello Handmade, which is excellent, by the way. Thank um, you. You're welcome. How long did it take you to pick out the songs for the album, and what emotions ran through you when it was finished? Ah, oh, that album was written kind of over the course of a of a long longer period of time um and we had to we pretty much handpicked we had written a bunch of different ideas over the course of basically a year or so and then finally kind of pieced it all together and we did it with all uh different producers um and and uh and also with former members <laughs> actually so it was kind of a, a long process to finally put piece that one together. But um, we recorded um, with a freelance producer named Justin Powell, who is based out of Rancho Cucamonga, California. And mm-hmm. then we also recorded at uh, Red Bull Studios in Santa Monica. Uh, so Red Bull, the you know, energy drink, they have a, a big recording yeah. studio uh, out in Santa Monica. And that's where we recorded... Um, few of those songs there and then we recorded with a guy named Kyle Holm who's based out of Fullerton and so combining with all three of those producers we finally pieced the album together and, and released it in 2010 and that's really kind of when our um, following in Vegas got a lot larger than it ever had before basically mm-hmm. after we released that you know we would play a show and there'd be 200 people there you know and then we'd you know, actually headlined the House of Blues a few times after that album came out and, you know, gotten four or five, six hundred people there. So Yeah, and that says a lot. If they headline you, they must really like your, your music and know that you have a good following. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was very very cool, very flattering. Um we were very, very excited to be able to do that a few times. Well, your recent release is your EP, A Different Pace, and congratulations on that, by the way. Um, Thank you. On this EP, you have six songs on it. Why didn't you just throw four more on there and make it an album like Goodbye Natural? <laughs> <laughs> um, we have been we have been trying to record for a long time, uh, so obviously since we hadn't done anything since 2010, but mm-hmm. um, we had... Uh, we had a, a member change uh, in between all that, and um, it was different. Uh, he had different um, ideas for the direction of where he wanted the band to go, and it didn't basically it didn't agree with the rest of us. So we uh, kind of parted ways, and that was in that was summer of 2012 when that finally happened. And we've been trying to write songs up to that point, but. Uh, hadn't figured out um, where to record yet and how to pay for it as well. So basically right, what happened was after <laughs> – Yeah. So um, so then it was just the three of us. It was me, Brian, and Joseph, uh, the drummer and my guitar player. And we kind of were at a standstill going, okay, what are we going to do at this point? And so we just decided, well, let's just keep writing songs and kind of you know just browse around for a possible new bass player. 
And in the meantime, we also decided to start recording YouTube covers because um, there is a, a a really interesting space on YouTube where of of uh, musicians doing cover songs. Because what will happen is, you know, one of the major label artists will release a new song like Lady Gaga or Justin Bieber or one of those, you know, huge uh, right. superstars. They'll release a new song, and then if you post a cover of that song on YouTube the traffic from people trying to find this new Usher song or this new Justin Bieber song uh, will basically, they'll they'll come across your cover video and you'll get thousands and thousands of views. Oh, just by doing wow. The cover. Nice little so we have a, you're letting out there. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, it's, I mean, it's kind of a secret, kind of not, but we, you know, we have a, so like we had a Justin Bieber video that had almost 100,000 views on it. We had a, wow. a Moon 5 cover video that uh, basically also almost did, you know, 100,000 views. So, so in the meantime, while we were doing that, uh, we were writing songs, and then we did a cover of an Usher song, and a website called Access for Artists hit us up uh, mm-hmm. on Twitter and said, hey, you should enter this contest, because they were having a cover song video contest on their website for recording money. <laughs> so, oh, said, okay. So we, entered, so we entered the contest two months later uh, after, you know, it's just an online promotional contest. We won the contest, and they give us three thousand dollars to record. Oh my gosh, so, that's was, wonderful! Yeah, it was, so yeah, it was perfectly meant to be. And then after we got the money, we were like, okay, now we can actually record music. And so we, you know, picked out who we were going to record with, where, and unfortunately, um, our budget was not high enough to mm. record a full length album. So we did okay. the EP just to. You know, because we hadn't done anything official, you know, since 2010, basically. So it was like, we just need to put something out there. And then I definitely, the next uh, piece of music that we record uh, will definitely be a full-length album. Well, you know, an EP is not a bad thing. It's, you know, you're getting your music out there. It doesn't always have to be a full-fledged album. And you actually Mm -hmm. have more songs on your EP than what I normally see. There's a lot of people that only put out three or four songs. Yeah, so I want to we do almost get a five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I want to do at least five songs, if not six, and we were able to pull up six quite nicely. So Yeah. Now really how good. did you decide on the title of the E P? Um We we threw a lot of ideas around, but I think the um the reason why is because uh the, we wanted the first track to be the way I feel, the one that you just played. Mm-hmm. And um it's like the first real substantial music that we've had, you know, we've had in over three years, basically. And so in the in the song, The Way I Feel, um, there's a lyric that's uh, the way you've changed my heart. It beats at a different pace. And when I and when I sing at a different pace, that's when the full band kind of comes in together, like the drums and the bass and everything. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like the first time you hear us all together in the album and you know for the first time in you know three years basically so we just figured uh, a different pace was an appropriate title for that based on you know that fact yeah most definitely it fits once you explain the story behind it I, you know i figured it had to do with a change so it was pretty yeah, much right and, you know <laughs> and we had you know we have a and we have what we believe is the final lineup for this group and and uh now that you know we are, now that we've released this album, like things are going to start picking up again. That's the plan. So it's a yeah. different pace. It's a it's a faster pace, you know. So that's right. kind of what right. we were going for with that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, the EP is available online and physical CDs at your venues. But if someone like me wants a physical CD and can't get to Las Vegas, unfortunately, mm-hmm. boo boo, to see you. Um, will that be something that they, you guys would offer, you know, to buy online too, yeah. besides the digital? Yeah, uh, very soon. Very 